just the whole Down syndrome thing was consuming my thoughts. And then I just had this kind of revelation one day that I'm not having a Down syndrome or I'm not having a child with Down syndrome, I'm having my daughter. It, initially when we heard about it, we were terrified. Do you know that way? I especially was like, it was, it was more the fact that you, I, I'm not, I didn't know a hell of a lot about it. Like. I couldn't imagine the future and I, I just kept thinking about you know, Down syndrome and what it was going to mean and how it was going to change and it, it was everything. It was everything that was consuming me but it's, it's all that just went out the window, you know, that way it was all about the baby, like, and it was just, you don't think about the Down syndrome, you don't think about the things that you might do down the future, it was all about just now. Just having that realisation that I, that, you know, that there was actually a child there and, and she was going to be born and she was going to be mine and she was going to need all the loving any child would need. So we, we were very upset, we were crying and everything, it was, it was, it was traumatic for a very short space of time, you know that way. And then when you get you get past it, and then you go, okay, you accept it, and then you go, okay, right, that's just the way it's going to be now. So. And the fact that she was had had Down syndrome wasn't going to define her. I wasn't going to introduce her. Going, this is my daughter with Down syndrome. The same way I wouldn't say, this is my son with blonde hair. You know, it was just it was going to be a part of her. But it, it didn't need to be the leading story in, in any news, you know, and it wasn't. So I kind of made a decision on that day that I was going to introduce her to people. And if they noticed, that was fine. You don't, you don't see the person you see, or sorry, you don't see the syndrome, you see the person. And especially being your own child, like it's, it's a sec it really is a secondary thing. Like I couldn't emphasize that, that more, like it's all about the child itself and the Down syndrome, it's such a secondary thing, like it's... It, it, I was, I really didn't want it to be a thing that was going to define who Shauna was. Shauna was Shauna and she just happens to have Down syndrome and she she was going to show me the way. Um, and I didn't know what that was, but as I, I kind of felt as long as I listened to her and tried not to treat her too differently, that she, she would show me the way. Um, and she has. Yeah, so I have a son, Finan, and he was two when Shauna was born, um, and so now they're three and five. Like her older brother is a god, is a godfather. So he has a he has a great connection with her like that. Like, but Finan, the two of them are like, she copies everything he does, <laughs> everything he does. So we're kind of like, if you want her not to misbehave, we have to make him not misbehave because she'll do whatever he does. Like, so that way for her. I see the two of them together and the love between them and the the caring and he's just he's like he just adores her like he absolutely adores her and he's um kind of pretends to be her teacher and and he has taught her stuff he's he's managed to teach her a story about at a a song about rainbows, Baobash, the, the, the teach in the Minra, and she she's never heard it other than from his mouth, and now she can sing a song about Baobash, the, it's, I mean, it's, it's the most unbelievable thing, but... Um, but she's so smart, she's so clever, and she has a lot more interest in everything, <laughs> in everything, like, absolutely, yeah, that bag, that, that camera, that... That doll, that aunt, everything will be fascinating to her, like, and it's, it really is the curious mind, and that's what you want the kids to have, really, I think, as well, like. And she captures everyone's hearts when, they, the minute they meet her, you know, she just, you know, you know, she'll just go give them a hug or a smile, or she'll bring them over a book or a toy, and she just draws people in, she, she, um, she's just so warm and, um, generous she's so generous with her time and her heart you know and it's just beautiful to to watch her with other people and um, I suppose my hopes for Shauna yeah she she's just so caring and she's so bright that you know I think that the world just has to you know find a place for her to deliver that because it's it's just amazing that I that you know I can imagine her working in some sort of nursing role or you know somewhere um, you know, or even in hospitality or something. You know, I'd I do, I do hope. I've really, really strong, high hopes that that you know she's going to spread, you know, her loveliness to to the world, and and that we don't keep it 
in these four walls that everybody gets to see it. So I do hope that you live an independent life and um, you know, and that, that you'll work and um, that you'll have friends and that she'll be really happy and you know, she'll find a life partner and all that. Yeah, you know, I've all those aspirations for her, yeah. Don't panic. Don't panic. It's not the end of the world. It's yeah, I would say you I don't feel bad that you do feel worried now because it's a natural it's a natural response. It really does. It's like I you get, it's, it can be so overwhelming that you might think that I can't do this. There's no way I can do this. But you have to trust in yourself. You really can do this without trying as much as you think you need to do. I wish I'd have known that I was going to be okay and the children with Down syndrome are just so much fun. I've met so many other parents, and and then I suppose the other thing is the um, the community, the Down syndrome community. Is I've met friends I know I'll have for the rest of my life that even without their child I've clicked with. So then I never would have met otherwise. Um, you know, so so the community and the support there is amazing. Yeah, I would I would say live your, uh, love your child first and foremost, and that, that the best thing you can do, especially in the first year of life, is just cherish them and love them and hold them and just hold them and play with them and and everything's going to be okay. And then it's actually everything's going to be more than okay, you know. And um, you're going to get this amazing life into your into your family, and um, they're just going to be such a bright shining star. Um, and nothing is as bad as as you're thinking and it, it's actually going to be great.